Good morning, this is Ian King Live, an hour of business and economic news from the heart of the city. Yesterday saw the start of the Ukraine Recovery Conference at Lugano in Switzerland, an event aimed at kick-starting the reconstruction of Ukraine and identifying how international partners can contribute to the country's recovery. But with the war showing no signs of coming to an end any time soon, Ukraine's Prime Minister has predicted that it could require as much as $750 billion to rebuild the economy. Well, among those attending the event is Alexander Komarov. He's chief executive of the Ukrainian mobile network Kyivstar, who joins me now. Alexander, very good to see you again this morning. Um, $750 billion is the, the total sum that Mr Zelensky wants to, uh, to see put forward. What does Ukraine get for that? You know, 70, 750, let's say, million is more kind of total amount that is support, sub, supposed to be split it in phases, Young, you know, so... We have a critical phase number one, and this is about critical infrastructure like water supply, electricity supply, heating, and probably roads and bridges. You know, and this is a phase one. Phase two is very much about humanitarian need, you know, like hospitals, schools, okay? And phase three is very much about, let's say, uh, turnaround of the whole Ukraine toward the European Union, you know, on this path of reforms. Should frozen and seized Russian assets be part of that recovery package? You know, so I think what is important is platform. You know, I suppose that there will be few sources, you know, so and from my perspective, what is more important is actually to have a transparent, mutually agreed platform, OK, a proper project management, OK, different sources of funds, you know, and a kind of mutual trust between Ukraine and uh, foreign supporters, you know, from, you know, this Western world that will help us. Is it possible to even talk about reconstruction when parts of your country are still occupied by Russia? Yes, you are right. It's difficult to talk about this, you know, and that's why it, this kind of uh, as this uh, need is actually split it in three phases. And the phase number one is very much about critical, really, really critical needs. You know, so I will give you an example. I was in Chernigiv. OK, this is just 150 kilometers from Kiev, a regional center. OK, so the, 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 the direct highway is actually ruined because the main bridge is ruined. So you need to take a local road. You know, the trip will take uh, four hours instead of two hours. OK, and the local road is not suitable for the trucks. And that's why the whole logistic is ruined, OK? So Chernigiv city was out of electricity for more than two weeks. I know that right now is a temporary scheme from the neighbor region is in place. So it's not sustainable taking into account that winter is coming. You know, so from telco perspective, we need to consider how to ensure that this local road will be covered and this new itinerary will be, I will say, comfortable for the people for transportation. One comment that I've seen from you fairly recently is that you think in future Ukraine is going to have to become like Israel. It's going to have to be an economy that's permanently ready for war. Yeah, I, I, I agree with this. Even in our future considerations, safety of network is one of the you know key goals that we would like to achieve. You know, instead of, I don't know, two electricity feeds, three, four electricity feeds, instead of two uh, fiber optic feeds, you know, four fiber optic feeds, okay? Instead of one recovery site located quite close to the main site, we need a kind of diversified strategy with four recovery sites that will be mutually independent, okay? And can work in a combination two plus two. You know, this will significantly affect not, you know, our business, but this will also most probably will affect how Ukraine will develop in the future. Well, let's talk a bit about your business. How have you been able to maintain network coverage in the in the face of these attacks? Uh, you know, Ukraine right now is split in three areas. Safety zones, relatively safety, because the, these zones are affected by rocket and air, air missile strikes. OK, so uh, I can say that in these areas, life is coming back to, to a kind of normality, to a kind of normality. Okay? Then we have a risky zones. OK, where we are forced to maintain network, to rebuild network, to, uh, you know, to, to support network almost every day with a risk to our employees. You know, 150 employees from the Kiev Star are working hard in order to keep this connectivity, you know, so to provide customers with access to the voice, data communication, information, which is probably even more important, OK, and to the different digital services. Ukraine is relatively digitized country, OK? And then we have occupied areas. And unfortunately, unfortunately, 
Okay, so we were, the network was shut down, okay, by Russians uh, on the occupied territories uh, at the end of May, beginning of June. Has it been possible for you to stop the occupiers from using your infrastructure, your masts in, in cities like Mariupol? No, no, it is actually impossible. Partially our infrastructure was destroyed. Partially our infrastructure is being, uh, is being reutilized by the enemy. Okay, what we were able to ensure is a protection of uh, the cyber perimeter of our network. And we invest quite a lot in these efforts and we invest quite a lot into the measures that help us to, let's say, mitigate these risks related to the penetration and phishing into the network. Now, when we last spoke, you were providing free services to the millions of Ukrainians who've been displaced. Are you still able to do that? Yeah, we are still providing quite a lot of free services. Uh, we have changed strategy a little bit, so I can give you a few examples. For example, we are trying to, to be back with kind of normal approach uh, within the safety zones. Okay, instead of free loans for our owners, we right now introduced with a great support from, uh, from the European operators, we introduced roaming like home. So right now, if you are just a proper customer duly, and duly paid your monthly fee, which is relatively low in Ukraine, so the average uh, revenue per user in Ukraine is around 100 grivna, which is something like three US dollars. Okay, with these three US dollars, you have a very generous allowance in 30 countries across Europe without any extra charges. Okay, and yes, we provide free of charge services, okay, in fixed business and in mobile business in the risky zones and in the occupied zones if we are still in operation. All right, Alexander, we have to leave it there, I'm afraid. It's good to talk to you again, sir. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.